This discussion has been a long time in the making. I actually made a video all about the Apple Watch about six months ago, but it was really about getting poignant points across and really defining what I wanted to say, and it can be difficult at times. This discussion might come across as very passionate because I am very passionate about what I do. And uh, some people might take offense, and I'm saying from the very beginning that if you don't agree with what I say, that's perfectly fine. I'm not stating this as law, this is not fact. This is just an opinion, and that's how you should take it. Just as a bit of background, if this video is reaching the broader depths of the internet, I am a qualified industrial designer. And at the same time, I am also a avid watch enthusiast. And I try and form this channel around the idea of watch design and art. And the Apple Watch pretty much encapsulates this. So for the first time, I think I could be one of the few people really qualified to talk about this product as it is. So what I'd like to do is to base this discussion around two key areas. The first area is looking at the general design of the watch and what it tried to do, how it's developed over time. The second part will be a bit more passionate, where I start talking about my thoughts about the Apple Watch, what it stands for, its principles. That you might find quite interesting. So the Apple Watch arrived, and I'm just trying to remember the date. It was around 2012 when the watch was first introduced. and received a lot of mixed reactions because at the time LG and Samsung and a few other companies already had these smart watches on the market and Apple released this radical new approach and of course being Apple the hype was huge and I was also very infatuated by it. I found the approach to be very different and interesting and I hope to explore that now in the discussion. They managed to introduce an entirely new line of product that pretty much summed up the idea of this technology meets fashion in the community. And I think what grabbed me the most when I first saw the, the initial launch and the watch being used was just the pure brilliance of how the straps could interchange with the watches. And I think what really grabbed me was that these objects were designed by watch enthusiasts, people who knew what watches were about. Mark Newson is a very famous Australian industrial designer. He created IKEA Pod and other brands of watches in his, under his general line. He collaborated with Jonathan Ive to create this piece. So both of these men knew what watch design was about. They knew what most community members wanted from their watches. And interchangeability for one thing, the whole idea of being able to switch between a rubber strap to a leather strap to mesh bracelets, all of that, it's just brilliant. Simple easy to understand, easy to execute, with zero thought put into the process. And that's where Apple design always shines. You know, there's, there's not much thought required when it comes to operating the product. And then we get to the actual design of the case and the face and everything else. This received quite a mixed reaction. In the design community, at least, I know a lot of pretty prominent figures looked at this and found it quite jarring because we look at a watch and we know that watch faces should be round. That's generally the case. And that's what most products were like at the time. So Apple bringing this radical rectangular shape was quite the conversation starter. But it also was intriguing. And I think the next step was just how they utilized the interface, the technology behind it, the, the crown, not for the sake of setting the watch, but for using it as a adjustable zoom. Very simple. You know, you're keeping all these tactile features that we know so well from traditional watches, but incorporating them in a bit more of a, a modern way. And in that sense, they're doing extremely well with that. That approach has been continued all the way through. Now, the thing is, when I saw the initial design of the watch, I wasn't as impressed as I thought I would be. I was very impressed with the strap integration and the bracelets, but the whole rectangular form didn't really catch on with me too much. Uh, but what they really did, and the whole idea was to translate the language of products like the laptops, computers, the phones, everything in their product line generally has a rectangular form to it. Being able to shrink it down and allow it to fit on the wrist, it pretty much works. It keeps that, that motif, that portfolio. I think when I saw the watch on the wrist and this, this rectangular form, it didn't appeal to me that much. 
it looked just like a piece of technology on the wrist. And maybe that's what bothered me at first when I saw it. And then the most hilarious thing was when they were introducing the, the first generation with the solid gold case and it was a beautiful looking object, but I mean, we know it's a piece of technology. So of course it would date and the technology would be phased out, but it was pretty funny nonetheless. So in the back of my mind, I saw the Apple Watch as a fad, in fact. I saw it as a gimmick. When it was released at first, it was a very expensive gimmick. It didn't exactly do much. It could tell you the time, it could synchronize with your phone, it could do a few background applications, but it had to synchronize with your phone, it had to charge very often. But the seed of the Apple Watch had been planted. The whole idea of this interchangeable sports watch that could then turn into a dress watch that could be used when you're running or when you're at the gym and then switch when you're going to work in the morning. So on that front, it was very interesting. This piece of technology that you could use and wear all day, every day, and it being a, I don't know, technological extension of yourself. And just basically running through the design of the watch again, the, the form is excellent. The way that the bracelet integrates with the case is genius. The whole idea of it being some form of rectangular pebble it looks modern, it looks retro, it has a nice blend of the two functions. The whole idea that you can change the interface, swap out the faces, the, the colors, it's brilliant. I mean, it's a customizable product. It is a brilliant product, without question. But now we lead to the more impassioned side of this discussion and my actual thoughts on the Apple Watch, what it represents, what it stands for. Just when I saw this, when it was launched and when it was praised and put on a pedestal, I knew it was a piece of technology that would be phased out. Phased out again and again and again and replicated just like the phones, just like the computers. Now there's nothing wrong with that. That's how a business works. That's how technology works. But for a watch, this is where it frustrates me. The reason why I am so passionate about watches from the heart is that there are so few products that are made in the world that are designed without obsolescence being factored in to their build. For those of you who don't know, obsolescence is basically a manufactured shelf life. Every product being made with an intention that it would one day break and need to be replaced. So we look at practically every consumable we own. Odds are it will eventually fail and need to be replaced, or at least some part of it will fail. Watches on the other hand, especially high quality watches made by German or Swiss brands, they are designed with the idea of lasting lifetimes. The whole approach is that the product lasts longer and longer. The whole idea of investing in this, this technology that they do, this mechanical technology, is that the lifespan of the watch continues to grow and extend further and further. We've seen just how popular vintage watches have become, and these products are 50, 100 years old and are still working flawlessly. So coming from a perspective of someone who appreciates watchmaking, these products that are made to last, the Apple Watch and the whole ethos behind the watch spits in the face of that reality. Personally, I really don't like the idea that the Apple Watch is made and recycled. And I think the original discussion about this began when I saw that there was a fifth generation of Apple Watch being launched. I just can't believe that over this period of time, there already have been five generations of this product. And because it's lasted so long and because the design seems to be working so well, more and more people are being drawn to them. They are now outweighing the watch industry at large. The Apple Watch is now one of the most highest selling watches in the world. Of course, the technology has now evolved and watches are capable of running by themselves practically. Uh, you don't need a phone anymore to synchronize. There are so many more new technologies inside the product that allows it to work underwater, for example. It can do many more tasks. It is much more intelligent as it is now than what it was when it was first released. But it's the principle of a watch like this being a consumable that bothers me. I think it's also the whole jack of all trades but master of none that bothers me about the product. Because it can tell the time, it has chronographs, it has health tracking, it can tell you the weather, answer phone calls. It does all of these things but it sort of gets in the way of the whole watch approach. When you think about the pure traditional simplicity of a watch, that it's just supposed to tell you the time, look attractive, function well, tell you the time, there's a big difference between these two echelons. So that's really the first point. 
the idea that this piece of technology is being phased out again and again and being bought again and again continually, feeding the consumer culture. The second point, and this might anger a few people, but take this with a pinch of salt. Once again, my opinion on the subject. As human beings, we have slowly but surely lost our way when it comes to accountability, responsibility, in the sense of knowing yourself. Getting quite deep here, but just hear me out. The big thing that these Apple Watches promote is health, right? A health app telling you to stand up, telling you when to walk, telling you what to eat, how many calories you burned, all of this stuff. Now you have to ask yourself, why is it that you need to rely on this thing to tell you what to do, when in fact you should know what to do? Instead of putting the blame on yourself for not doing these things, you're blaming the product at the end of the day. You're making the product accountable for your actions. So this is one of the main reasons why I do not own one of these products is because I don't need to be told when to exercise or what to eat because I have a rational sense of knowing what not to do, what to do when it comes to diet, when it comes to following an exercise regime. This, this laziness that the world has fallen into where this product is made to tell you what to do, the product answers your phone calls, it does it all for you. You don't even have to press a button anymore to ask it what to do, you just talk to it. Of course, technology is all about being an extension of yourself. And these products are made in order to help and improve your life. That's pretty much what industrial design is about. But there is a limit. You have to ask yourself, are these products not taking away your basic intelligence with regards to your health, your well-being? There have been miracle stories about these watches being able to detect arrhythmias, for example, and the person being able to go to the doctor and have a heart surgery right there and then. But for the majority of people who don't have these problems, who are now relying and are virtually dependent on this technology to tell them just how much they need to exercise a day or how much they need to eat. The thought just comes to me that we're living in a world where it's governed by George Orwell's 1984 combined with HAL 9000 of 2001 A Space Odyssey. You have this product that tells you what to do, but at the same time it controls what you do. Now because the trend of owning these are becoming more and more popular, many more people are buying these for the sake of these brilliant functions. They buy these products to lose weight. They buy these products to become healthier and fitter. But why is it that a piece of technology like this needs to be your incentive to live a better life? So it is a very deep discussion and I'm sure there's going to be lots of debate in the comment section about this because it's something I feel very strongly about. I don't believe that you should rely on technology like this to govern your time, what you're doing. I believe that a watch should be a traditional thing that tells you the time and that's it. The more power you give to these products, the more they're going to control you at the end of the day. So in summary, as a product, the Apple Watch is a brilliant product. Well made, simple, easy to use, easy to operate, brilliant idea of incorporating different straps, different wearing experiences. As an object, a thing built around obsolescence that is going to be disposed, that is essentially a waste of money, if you ask me, that more and more people are relying on and depending on to remain healthy, to follow a more regimented life. I think it's one of the greatest travesties in our modern era, which is why I will never own an Apple Watch. I find it hard enough to follow life on a cell phone, but then having this technological extension on my person all day, every day, it scares me. So those are my thoughts on the Apple Watch. I'm sure uh, it's very different to what you expected me to say. And again, I will reiterate that it is a brilliant product. It's serving the purpose of being a consumable piece of technology perfectly. But as an object, I cannot agree with its principles and fundamentals. What it was actually made for in the first place and where it might be taking us in years to come.